Happy Thanksgiving everybody! Warboss Tay here and look what I got in the mail yesterday. Tamorkan, the throne of chaos. I just got my book in from Warhammer Forge and so I'm gonna do a little bit of an unbooking today for you to celebrate Thanksgiving and all things awesome like that while I wait for the turkey. So looking by the cover art you see a lot of great detail and and just the art looks really really awesome reminds me of the old realm of chaos books for any of you long beards out there that that remember that but there's that model of the Tamorkan and his giant giant Nurgle monster and uh, I haven't I just got this out of the box I haven't taken the plastic off because this is on the back so let's let's look at it this tome retells the brutal conquests and bloody battles of the chaos warlord Tamorkan and his horde in their quest to attain the favor of the dark gods. So we're going to be taking a look at the, you know, what kind of art is in here, the campaign system a little bit, and the fully playable Chaos Dwarf Army list. And it says that in order to use this, you need the Warriors of Chaos and Empire Army books. So that's cool. Right on, China. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna take the plastic off of the book and then we'll take a look inside and see what there is to see. Okay, so I just read through the book, Tamar Khan, The Throne of Chaos, and I had a great time with it. Let's take a look at what you see. So the first thing you see when you open the book is the area of the empire and the surrounding lands that are affected by Tamar Khan's rise and fall. And what's cool is at the bottom you see these great, this great artwork of the Nurgle, Demon, an Empire Soldier, a Night Goblin. Just the art style is very John Blanche and you'll notice throughout the whole book that it's gonna look really um, really like a graphic novel comic and just the, the art style is really fantastic. You've got an ogre, what I assume to be either a dwarf or a chaos dwarf, could be either a really angry dwarf or a chaos dwarf. I think a chaos dwarf because it's got the pleated braids uh, on his beard and can't tell what this is. If it, it looks like one of those the new Chaos Dwarf um, models with the full face helmets. But you see the Ogre Kingdoms, the Dark Lands, the Border Princes, and then the Badlands, and then the Empire where the where Tamar Khan goes. And at the very back of the book, you see the same map, but then now with the with the um, line of invasion, so I think that's a cool way to bookend, bookend the product. And you see, at the beginning is 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 what sets up the whole book. It's uh, a report written by a wizard who who fought a renegade wizard, and um, and his battle and, and his and in the battle they found this this collection of of writings from one of Tamar Khan's lieutenants or um, magicians or sorcerers or whatever but one of his followers so the whole book just like an imperial army book is told from the perspective of someone who was actually there rather than as just the omni omniscient narrative so here's what I mean by the really graphic novel style art and these nerglings just look so gross and disgusting and all the chapters are begun with these kinds of kinds of um, art pieces so really fantastic really fantastic the whole first part of the book is first half of the book is just telling you about the rise of Tamar Khan and and his armies and it's just, uh, it's just it's all fluff but the fluff is great and it's punctuated by these pieces of art and here's the corpse tree thing chosen so so you, you get a Whenever there's a piece that looks like this, it's straight, straight fluff, something that happened. And whenever it's like in this regular written font, then it tells you about what happened in a more broad, general sense. But this is like the the novelization part, um, and and tells you a little bit about each of the different units. You get some artwork from the Marauders and what their things look like. But it's a lot different from the uniforms and heraldry books because the artwork in that is very clean and in this you see it's very dirty and rusted and it's hand-drawn so 
Really cool. Some more artwork. So yeah, it just tells about how Tamarkan united all the, the hordes of chaos. How they got these s s giants and um, set them up. How they met the chaos dwarves and got them to fight with them. How they got the, the ogres to ally with them. So you get a little bit of ogres. Uh, and you, you get a background fluff on, 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 on the Chaos Dwarves, like I said here, they're, they're one of their strongholds and their war machines, all the great new stuff you see from Forge World. There's not enough, I noticed, to make a Chaos Dwarf whole kind of army, because Chaos Dwarves only have like two units in the range right now, along with the heroes and the giant war machines, but this is a great starting point for, for introducing contingents of Chaos Dwarves into your army. and. Um, you know, hopefully they'll do more with them in the future. The Night Goblins, you get some cool Night Goblin fluff. How they kind of help Tamar Khan in their own indirect way. Some trolls. But this is all just a story and it fleshes out a little bit of the background of, of what happened during this, this time. Which was like, I think somebody says like 10 years in the past of the current of the current storyline. And then we get into the Empire when they're finally crossing the border and attacking the Empire. So you've got a little description of what was going on in the Empire at the time. The lands of the Empire, you get this artwork of a warrior priest in full regalia. Then it tells you a little, about, a little bit about what's going on with Karl Franz and how Karl Franz, the Emperor, was just a young man at the time of this and he was off fighting off some other wars so he had to named the Countess of Nuln to, to take care of this while he was gone or it, while he was off doing other stuff. So here you see some fluff of where the, the army, the hordes of chaos were traveling and then it's really cool because you had handwritten, destroyed, hordes split, sacked, sacked, different places were burned, hordes recombined, sacked and destroyed. So it's, the artwork is so cool where you see like the regular map and then you see the handwritten updates and notes taken by the generals. Uh, and then more fluff about what happened. And getting into battles, does anything else happen here? And you get some, some artwork. Even the Empire stuff is all hand drawn and looks really, really good. So, so as you can see, it's all like original Forge World stuff. And look at this artwork right here with the giant great unclean one. And all the chaos hordes attacking the disciplined lines of the Empire. There you see the Marienburg land ship. There's one of them. There's another one that's burning outside the great city of Nuln. But just, oh, so grand, so awesome. A little bit of the knightly orders of Templars. Them attacking with the Chaos Dwarfs, War Machines. Some more nurgling goodness, and that's it. So that's all of the fluff, and then we get into the actual campaign. This is where you can run your own recreation of what happened. So what they what they do is they split the campaign into six phases. They give you some special rules on how you can do each one, but then each phase, you and your gaming group can take on each kind of little battle that was the rise and fall of this of this uh, warlord, Tamarkan, all the way up to the Great Battle of Nuln. So it gives you special rules on how many points to do, the, here are the special rules of what happens in each one. This Conquest of Giant one sounds like a lot of fun where you've got one player being the army that are tr that's trying to capture the giants with a bunch of grapples and and, uh, and stuff, and then you've got the other side playing the five giants. And they even tell you, you know, obviously you're not gonna have five giants, everybody's not gonna have five giants just lying around, so you can just use appropriate base size monsters and stuff. And then you've got each scenario, or each battle in the scenario, laid out for you. Night goblins. And then it gives you three bestiaries. So the first one is for Tamarkan, and this giant toad dragon, Ubebulos. Then this is actually the chronicler, the writer of the whole book, Fluff. Uh, it's told from his point of view, and that's a uh, sail, the faithless. And yeah, it's really interesting that 
you know, it's told from from his point of view rather than a chronicler from the Empire, that would be pretty boring. Then you've got the different Chaos Champions and different new regiments like the Toad, the um, Bile Toad, no, Plague Toads of Nurgle and their riders, War Mammoth, the new Giants, the Siege Giants and all their special rules, how to, how to attack a city, and then you've got the, the short sheets here. And then you've got rules on how you can incorporate all three Chaos Armies, Warriors, Demons, and Beastmen into a giant um, host, Chaos host. And then how one of your, one, whichever Chaos God you want to serve has special rules and abilities by being Paragons. And it's just a really great fluffy way to, to establish your Chaos Army. Then you get into the Empire, their heroes, and this guy, oh his story is so tragic. <laughs> And the different units that, that Forge World is selling is that creepy amethyst wizard lady on her dragon. Great artwork, great stuff, great stuff. The land ships. Uh, the, the lead pulled the black general. He's got an interesting story, interesting fluff, interesting rules. And the model itself is just really great for a stand-in empire general if your gaming group doesn't like using uh, Forge World rules, and you've got Chaos Dwarf history and fluff and special rules. And for all you Chaos Dwarf fans out there, you've got the basic stat lines, the Infernal Guard, which are the models that they sell now, and then some of the special characters like this guy on the giant winged Taurus. Bull Centaurs, which I love and are really interesting. Forge World doesn't have any models for them yet, but hopefully this means that they will start to produce them because these guys are awesome. And, and then you get the, the all the special rules for the giant choo-choo train that Forge World produced. So it's great to see this stuff actually fleshed out. And then <laughs> rules for hobgoblins. Um, the wolf riders and their general animosity rules and stuff. So great ways to incorporate those. As well as some new stuff. The k Eye, which is like just a monster of molten metal and lava that can be summoned. I don't think they have a model for that yet. And then you've got the Great Taurus, which I think Forge World has a model for. And then just the rules for using Chaos Dwarves in your Warhammer army as uh, supplements to your Warriors of Chaos army. And then you've got some runes over here. And then... Yeah, after the Chaos Dwarves, that's it. Really, you get, you get at the end, you get the um, scrolls of summoning if you're doing Storm of Magic games, so that anybody can use the giant siege giant or the bio trolls and stuff. And then at the end, you get this author's note, which is really great because it talks about doing more books like this in the vein of this for the for the future for Warhammer Fantasy, just like Imperial Armor books for for Forge World, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they can do to flesh out, flesh out the history and the fluff and bring some more great pieces like this. So there you have it, it's my review and unbooking of the Tamarkan book, The Throne of Chaos. For bang for your buck, if you're a player who can get your gaming group to do a campaign style like this, or just loves and has a lot of these Forge World models, then I think this is definitely a great book to get. If you're just into the fluff and you just are a collector like myself, then I also highly recommend it just because it's so different from any of the army books that GW puts out. The way the fluff is written, the artistic style, like you could open it up to almost any page like I just randomly did and then you've got this great shot of the Chaos Dwarf gun line besieging Null and the art is just so so great and so detailed and so evocative and it's just really dark and grim and yeah I'd say it's a great bang for your buck and it, it is a little pricey so definitely you want to treat yourself if you've got the money lying around and you want something different but I, I highly recommend that you get it if that's your thing if you're into Chaos Dwarves or you're into um, just chaos in general it's a great read it talks a little bit about you know the foibles and just man's inherent 
desire to to get power and 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 just to be as strong as he can at any cost. And um, the only thing that I'm kind of sad about is that it doesn't really get into Nurgle as um, that kind of jolly grandfather Nurgle persona that that we've seen him a lot in the in the fluff. In the past it always talks about you know grandfather Nurgle and Papa Nurgle being just this kind of jolly kind of happy-go-lucky chaos god out of all four of them he's he's like the one that is just kind of like you know decay and rot is just a way of life and it's all just gonna happen so be happy and smile about it and it doesn't really get into that it talks about how Tamar Khan and all of his followers are just filled with crazy rage all the time and um, I kind of kind of would have liked to see a little bit more of that Papa Nurgle jolliness in this but um, yeah, like I said, it's it's a great book to get if you're into the into the fluff and all of that. And I hope you like this unbooking. I hope you and your families all have a happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you uh, in the next video.